Well, all right. Why don't we go ahead and call the meeting? Yeah. I will. Um, That's fair. I will call the meeting to order. Um, <clears throat> and move right along to item number two, public comment. Have there been any oral or written comments that have been served? There are none. We'll move along to item three, approval of the minutes. Is there a motion? Um, I move to approve the October 19, 2020 minutes from our meeting. So moved. Is there a second? How are you? Second. Moved and seconded. Uh, any discussion? Okay, that's what I was just calling and checking in. So, all right. Well, if, no, take care. No, if no discussion, uh, all in favor? Rachel? Aye. Mary? Aye. And chair is aye. We should note that uh, Barbara, as of this time, is not in attendance. All right, and um, how about the August 5th meeting? I don't believe Mary or I have the authority to move to approve those as we were not present. Neither of you was present, that's correct. Um, and you don't, you don't have to be present to vote on them. Right, okay, well, I'll, I'll make the motion uh, to accept the August 5th minutes. Is there a second? I'll second. All right, second it, Mary. Uh, any further discussion? If none, uh, roll call. Rachel? I, I abstain. Okay, Mary? I abstain. All right, I will approve. I vote. So I vote aye and uh, two abstentions. Uh, number four, review uh, fiscal year 21 expenditures and revenues. Um, we did not receive any uh, reportings to that effect prior to the, the uh, postings. Uh, not, not, yeah, not, not since uh, the last one you had. Right. I'd have the uh, individuals who are, I'm assuming, have left. Um, did they present? Did they submit anything prior to their departure? No, they did not. So, is there? What are the thoughts about uh, when we might have those uh, those reports? Soon as we get somebody into that uh, position, that they'll they'll get updated. Okay, so how how far back is that um, incumbent going to have to uh, go back? This, so the last the last summary was the one that we received. Is that right? Right, and I think I remember that being October the October eighth one. Okay, so it will go back to October eight. Yes. And then our next meeting would be is on what December fourteenth on the calendar. Yeah, December fourteenth. Unless we unless we see it necessary to call another meeting. In between, correct. In between, yeah. All right. Any further discussion about that item? Questions, comments? I think it's difficult to have purview when we don't really actually have any new fun, new information. It makes it difficult to do our job. All right. For sure. Does somebody want to call? But it's. Um, well, well, we'll talk further about those uh, positions in the 
approved. Number six. Mm -hmm. um, all right, if no further commentary, we'll move along to uh, number five. Uh, review department requests. Are there any? None that I'm aware of. All right. Personal requisition forms, number six, town accountant. Uh, Mr. Chair, Ken? Yes. I have a question. Um, yes, Mary, sorry. <laughs> uh, that's okay. Uh, my voice is really weak. Um, I just wanted to go back and, uh, and review with the committee. If you recall, there was a state audit back in 2014 that basically said they, that the finance committee sign off on personal forms was really outside the purview of a finance committee. Now I know the bylaws are being reviewed, under review, and it takes a long time. And certainly the uh, uh, PQB handbook is being reviewed also. But my question to the committee is, since we know that this is really a staffing personnel function, do we want to individually look at these requests? Because in essence, the funds have already been approved by virtue of the budget process. You know, as we're reviewing it, we're looking at the personnel costs, et cetera. So the, the figures already have those personnel baked in. So now we're getting the request to fill the vacancies. Well, we've already provided the funds for the, for the position. So my question again to the committee is, do we want to get into looking at personnel actions? Well, there are going to be situations where the funding has not been provided, right? And that's going to need to come. Right, correct. And I'm not saying well, change the process. What I'm saying is when it's an established funded position, so basically it's a swap. One person leaves, we're getting a new body in. Should we, the committee, spend time reviewing the request since we know funds are already in place and the town account or someone in accounting is, is signing off on the form certifying that the funds are in place so hmm. what duty are we what what review are or what's the purpose for us to review the request if it's our our primary function is the finance portion and we've already done that i know when it's a new a new position being established and certainly right. the finance committee would play an important part in reviewing where the dollars come from but my question is an established authorized funded position do we need to be reviewing it? Or should we say, like we do for warrant items uh, with the Community Preservation Act, it's outside our purview? It's not outside your purview because it's currently in the rules and regulations. So until that's removed, it's in your purview and you should be acting on them. Well, uh, our action, an action can be, it's not in our purview. Like we do for the, the and I'm not being argumentative, I'm just asking, Again, when we're looking at it, is, is this a staffing action or is this a finance action? At this point, it's a finance action until it's removed to them, those rules and regulations. So you should let the PPB no, be no, board know that your feeling is that the PRFs in the future, when, for, when they take up the changes, uh, as long as it's an established position and signed off for, with funds for by the town accountant, that it should you believe it should not be reviewed by the finance committee or doesn't need to be reviewed by the finance committee. What do the other members feel, Rachel or or Ken? What do you think? I guess. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Ken. Oh, you to you. Go ahead. I feel that if it if the the parameters change and there needs to be an increase in financing for it or if it has to do with that type of but if it's an even exchange going from one i i guess we'd have to just review those bylaws again to see because i think we can i think both you mary and ed can be correct on this yeah you know, it may fall through in within our purview if it means funding or you know changes in where those funding aspects come from but if it's just 
a direct personnel change, then no, I don't believe it is in their purview, even if it would say in the bylaws, because what exactly is our purview on that? We're not here, we're, we're not here making personnel changes or recommendations. So that's not, that's not the oversight of the finance, nor should it be. Yeah, I, I can see, I can see both sides. I guess my, my comment would be, um, it may not be in the purview for us to be responsible for or to get involved with the actual hiring process, but we still have a responsibility to um, be aware that the funding is there. So you're not letting somebody else make a decision that the finance committee is not going to need to see this because the funding is there. So I think the formality of it probably still needs to exist so that we just say, okay, we know the funding is there. We don't have to spend any time with it. We don't get, we're not getting Maybe ourselves. That's how we frame our, 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 our vote is by indicating that we're, we're voting that we agree that the funding is still available and, you know, in that respect, but to, to, to say any specificities regarding the personnel change or the personnel request, no. I don't think that we should be commenting on that. I agree. I agree. But, but I think I think the submission of this information is not so much that we're going to judge, you know, who's going to fill the position. It's just that the position is there, the funding is there, it's signed off, Ed signed off on the fact that the funding is there. And, you know, that that dots the I and crosses the T, so to speak. Mm -hmm. but we don't, and we don't spend any time about getting involved with the, um, with the personnel. So Mary, I understand that it's, it's probably unnecessary from the standpoint of um, its submission, but I still think we have the responsibility to sign off on the number to make sure that we We've been told that the funding is there and and then fine, we're good to go. Okay. All right. Ed, do you have any further comment? No, I think I think you've covered it. Uh, if if did you get uh, did you get the email from the PPPB about uh, going over the rules and regulations? I did not. I did not. Oh, okay. I will make sure that I forward that to you then, because it's also got a copy of the rules and regulations in it. And uh, like I said, take a look at it. It probably needs to be re uh, reworded because, you know, in my opinion, the finance committee may want to uh, actually have PRS come to them where there's some type of change in what the pay range would be or whatever, or if it's a new position, uh, whereas you may not want them to actually come to you for approval if it's the same position, the same pay range, and uh, the money's in the budget. So, uh, so take a, you'll want to take a look at that whole section and decide, okay, yeah, we may not want, want the, these in this circumstances coming to us for approval, but yes, we would still like to see these. So under the rules and regulations, Ed, are those, those, when are those, when do this, does that need to be submitted for approval? Is there a timeline for those rules and regulations? The uh, the PPB uh, just sent out an email the end of uh, last week to um, the department heads uh, uh, asking to to review it and send them ba uh, send back to the PPB any uh, suggestions or recommendations for changes. Okay. I don't recall them putting a deadline in there, but I could be wrong. Okay. All right. So um, <clears throat> staying with number six, so we are basically acknowledging um, the um, financial condition relative to the uh, remaining funds to um, 
fund the new hire when and if that happens. Likewise, uh, with the interim town accountant, that is a similar situation. Am I right? Looks to be that way, yes. Yep. And I and I just want to check with Ed. There's no the PQB doesn't have to sign the PRS because it's an established position, right? And there was no change to the to, to the position description or the job description. What's that? The PQB did not have to sign the PRF because there was it's an established job description. There was no changes. Is that why there's no signature from the PQB? I'm no, it's just because of in this wonderful COVID time. Uh, I haven't gotten the hard copy with their signature yet. Okay, but they, oh, they've already seen this then. They've yes. already proved it, okay. Yeah, the, the town accountant and the interim town accountant, uh, they approved at their 1022 meeting. Okay. And do all PRFs have uh, PQB sign off? Do all of them have to have PQB sign off? Yes. Okay, thank yeah. you. Yeah, the, the, uh, the uh, let's say, the treasurer, collector clerk, which is the third one, uh, I believe is on the PPB uh, meeting for their approval for tonight. So rather than having them approve it tonight and waiting two weeks, uh, that one, if you are willing to uh, approve it, you might just want to approve that one on it being conditional upon uh, PPB PB approving it and signing it. And then one of the set a new position. Sorry, Mary. Oh no, no. Go ahead. Is is that a new position, Ed? No, it's not. No. No, there's th there's three individuals in the treasurer collector's office. The treasurer collector, the assistant treasurer collector, and the treasurer collector clerk. The treasurer, the person that was sitting in the treasurer collector clerk's position is being uh, promoted to uh, the assistant treasurer collector. So it will make that position available and vacant. So this, but the information that we had on the um, town accountant's position with the remaining funding? Yes. We don't see that number on, on here, correct? Shouldn't we have that number on here as well? Because that's a position that's going to be vacated, but has already had already drawn down the allocation, drawn down some of the allocation. Oh, is it, isn't that number on the copy you have? We've got the annual expense, which I'm assuming is the uh, the full year salary. Yeah, but there should also be with Vicky's initials on it, $32,640 remains till uh, the 630. Uh, for the assistant. Oh, for, for the town accountant. No, 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 I'm talking about this, the third one here. Oh, okay, you're getting ahead of me. Uh, yes, that, that one just came through on Thursday night, the uh, select board uh, appointed me for a very short time to be the interim town accountant for sign off. So I just didn't have an opportunity to initial that, uh, okay. that fund funding's available uh, for that uh, to uh, be before it went on and before I scanned it to your meeting. So yes, that is signed off on or has been signed off on. Right. But there's, we still don't know what the remaining uh, available funds are for that. There's enough there to carry it through the end of the year um, so at the current sa at the current salary or the okay. current hourly wage. All right, similar to the town accountant. Yes, okay. and the interim. Okay. Sorry, you had me confused there for a minute. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's yeah, um, okay. All right, so so we're up to speed on A and B. Any questions, comments about uh, the PRF for the uh, treasurer, collector, clerk? 
I don't have a question on the positions, but I have a question on the form. Is there a standard form that's used townwide? And the reason I ask is if you look at the treasurer, collector, clerk position, the, the benefited, non-benefited options does not appear on the form, but they're dated the same. It says April 2015. So I'm just wondering, are there different versions around the town? What was the other one? If you look at the a town accountant, you'll see that there's check benefit or non-benefit. Yep. Yep. The treasurer, collector, clerk position, that doesn't appear on the form. So I'm asking, is there a different form used for different positions? Because they're both dated April 2015, the form. Right. right. Yeah, no, there shouldn't be. The one that has the... Uh... The uh, benefited, non-benefited on it is the newer of the two. Hello. Hi. How are you doing? So, where do these for, where does where does the form originate from? Ed? Is it from your office? No, it's actually from the PPPB. So I'm going to have to go. They may, they have may, uh, Jen may have had an old version on her computer rather than going to uh, the common drives under the PPPB form. So I'm going to have to check on that with her. Okay. And then anything over 20 hours, 20 hours or more, uh, just so you know, is benefited. All right. All right. And, and okay. when, can, when can the supervisor actually post for the vacancies? And I'm sorry to ask all the personnel questions, but I'm just curious, when can those be posted? Does it have to go through all the approval processes before they go and post public, you know, that we have a vacancy? It's supposed to. To be honest with you, I posted the town accountant in the interim one uh, before you have approved it only because it was hanging out there so long and I didn't want to hold up on posting it. Okay. okay. Any other questions, comments? No? All right. So do we need a, um, yes, we do need a formal vote on these three. Yes, you would. Yep. Do we have to do them individually or can we do them as a group? You can do them as a group if you want. Okay. Okay, is there a motion? I motion that we recommend the Phil uh, town accountant, interim town accountant, and the treasurer collector clerk positions all right is there a second i second moved and seconded any further discussion if not roll call mary aye rachel aye and the chair is aye it's unanimous All right, old business, committee assignments. Yet I think you were gonna get some information for us. Yeah, and I haven't gone, gone through all the minutes to find out exactly uh, all of the ones. The ones I do remember uh, were the ones you were talking about last week. There are two uh, actual voting positions uh to committees one being the community preservation committee uh that a finance committee member holds and then the other one being to a uh, voting position to the pppb that a finance committee member holds and then the only other two that i know of for sure uh that um the uh 
finance committee had had liaisons to the past or a committee assignment or the two school committee uh, committees, the regional and the local. But I will go back and review the minutes again just to see if I have missed anything. Okay. Now the CPC, that was, that was the one that Barbara was um, a member of, right? It's the one that she wanted to check her calendar about and see if she could, could do that. Uh, she was willing to do that as long as there wasn't a conflict. Right. Okay, so you didn't hear anything further from her? No, and while you talk about those amongst yourself, let me go downstairs and just see if her, uh, by any chance, she emailed me that she was having problems getting into the meeting. So let me check on my regular computer. I do have a recommendation for the committee. Um, okay. The Capital Improvement Committee, which it's, it meets infrequently if you look at the meetings minutes. Basically, they start ginning up as we get closer to the annual town meeting. Sure. I think that would be valuable for us to have a liaison just for the fact that we can actually see the process as to yep. how they determine the prioritized, you know, what is the asset inventory for the town? The big dollar tickets all come from that, which come then to our committee as part of warrant item articles. So I think it would be really beneficial if we would have a liaison to that uh, committee, the Capital Improvement Committee. Yeah, I would agree. And then the other one for consideration is the select board. Um, as you know, the select board, it's our executive branch for the town. Everything comes in front of the board and all the financial issues come in front of the board, all the grant information, all the grant applications, et cetera. And I think it would be beneficial if we had a representative, a liaison that has the open line of communication with them and you'll hear, you'll hear firsthand um, the activities that are occurring in the town. So it puts the committee, our committee, more in a proactive stance versus a reactive stance when there's a financial issue that's gonna come before us. So that's two items that I'd like, you know, to put forward for consideration. Is that a situation that has existed? Has there been? Has there in the past, if you go back and you look at the finance, finance committee back in 2015, Yep. You'll see there's actually uh, the chair was a uh, uh, periodic attendee at the select board. Okay. And I'd volunteer for the capital committee. All right. If that's what the, you know, if that's what we want to do, you yeah. know, I'm putting that out there for suggestions because we still have to look at the schools and the schools take 65% of the, the budget. So that's important that we have, you know, representation there so we can hear about their budget issues, et cetera. But we're only four people right now. Right. Well, Mike is going to be interested and will be a, you know, full compliment. But right now we're at four. Yep. And if we have all of these requirements, and if we're considering the two additional ones I'm bringing forward, then we have more committees than we have bodies to put to. So right. we prioritize, right. you know, what what are the priorities for the committee, for our committee? Right. I think, well, I think, if, I think if we have to sit on, on different boards, that it should be those that are directly related to the amount of funding that needs to go to them. I mean, the capital fund, of course, we need that should, we should have representation there. If the schools are taking that large amount of the budget, then there should be a representative there. And, and I think it should be geared in that direction as where where's the money flowing and we should have a seat at the table there. Right. Just to at least see what's going on. Right. And have the firsthand knowledge, uh, hear how they come to their decisions, how they're developing, et cetera. It's to me, from my perspective, then when it comes in front of the, the finance committee, we already have that background information. We don't have to get down into the weeds at that time. We right. already have that information well in advance of seeing an, uh, a, warrant article, a warrant article for you know discussion at, at one of our meetings. Right. The other piece with that, though, I, I mean, I, I still go back to, and I understand that right now we don't have the town accountant uh, position filled, but 
when I've sat on on finance committees, we've always had the you know the accountant present what's going on so that we have a better idea and it's coming from that individual. I feel like we're we're going blindly right here. I mean, we don't even have an you know a P and L for you know, the last one is dated September twenty seventh. I mean. I mean, I, I know it's unique times, but how can you be expected to fulfill your position when you don't even have the materials to do so? I think we'll be in a better position since a new person will be coming on board. We can actually establish that line of communication early. And then as part of our agenda, my recommendation would be then you extend a formal invitation to the individual to come and brief the status of funds that's provided to us. Um, We've only received one piece of it, you know, the expense portion. We haven't re received one revenue report. Now, at the last meeting, you know, a couple of weeks ago, Ed told us it was imminent, it should be coming, etc. It usually takes this long of a time before we get our first revenue report. Well, we're, we're looking at expenses, and if you remember the last meeting, I brought up these added lines of expenses that were added to education, and we really didn't get a good answer as to, well, where's the revenue portion coming from? I think if we get that new uh, accountant on board, then we'll have them you know, address us and then fill in those bits of information that we're, we've been missing. Yep, great. Well, do we have, I mean, I don't have a problem if in the past, um, you know, the chair has been the representative to the, you know, select board meetings. I don't have a problem with that. Um, but there, what, what about school? Yeah, for, What's that? I was going to say, just for consideration, they're about three hour long meetings. Yeah. From my perspective, I would like to, um, you know, to offer, but it, I, I really need to know, you know, with my other, my, my day job, if you will, <laughs> what that looks like, because I, I can only give so much, unfortunately, in three, you know, three hours at a time, you know, I would need to know what that, what that expectation would be before I commit. Okay. All right, then. <sighs> Ed, do you have any any feel for um, when you can get the details for these committee participation? I'll see if I can get my administrative assistant to look back through their, some of their old minutes uh, right. to see anything different. Like I say, the one the ones I definitely know of were the two voting memberships to the. Uh, PPPB and the Community Preservation Committee. Right. They tried to have liaisons to the school committees, but uh, that's a big commitment in itself. So, you know, sometimes they had got w one of them, if not both, covered. And other than that, I don't really recall them having liaisons to any other committees. What about the select uh, board? I don't recall them having a, uh, because of the fact that there's a select board uh member that's a liaison to the uh, finance committee i don't recall the finance committee having a liaison to the select board Actually, I, say, I will i will have judy take a look at some of the old minutes and see if we can find any any other liaisons Actually, uh, look at the yeah. and if you look at the 2015 select board minutes, you'll see that the finance committee actually had a, their chair was the liaison to the select board. Okay. But anything since then? Well, the minutes have been sporadic, so uh, you know, there's been no minutes basically since 2019. And, and back then, when I looked at them, basically they were just doing PRFs and PCFs. Okay. And there was no information on a, you know, community preservation committee. They didn't talk about, you know, the PPBB. There was none of that information that was contained in those minutes. Perhaps they did it, but it wasn't reflected in the minutes. Minutes. Okay. Yeah. Like I say, I know that they had um, the, uh, the committee members assigned to those two committees. Yeah. All right, 
then all right so what's the what's the pleasure of the committee we want to wait until we get all of the that information back from uh, ed before we go forward with any uh, formal uh, decision. decision on that I'd like to table it till we have the complete information and Barbara is present so we can start divvying it up. Okay. I agree. Great. All right. I agree. All right. Then I guess we probably need a vote to uh, table the um, committee assignments for pending further uh, feedback from uh, Ed. Can I have a motion to that effect? I motion that we table it till the next meeting. Okay. I second. All right, moved and seconded. Any further discussion? No. Okay, roll call, Mary. Aye. Rachel. Aye. The chair is aye. Okay. New business. Any new business to come before the committee? No, all right. That being the case, number nine, any other business? No. Moving on, number 10, any liaison reports? Being none, number 11, any other pressing business that cannot wait until the next meeting? Just have a question. Have we yes. uh, have we formally closed out fiscal year 2020, Ed? No, we have not. Okay. I, suppose, I suppose that would be hard to do without an account. I thought maybe perhaps she depart before she departed, she would have done that. No. no there's still a few steps left to finish that off. And then the other question I have is the town's financial policies and procedures. You had said, uh, Ed, that you were going to research those approved finance policies, procedures, and provide that to us. Yeah, I'll ask Judy to take a look at that and scan them, and I'll send them to you. Thank you. Okay, anything else? Um, that being the case, next scheduled meeting is Monday, December 14, 2020. And do you want it set up for 5.30 again? 5.30 and okay. works for me. How about you folks? Yes, it's fine. All right. I'll set it up in Zoom and send the information out to you then. Thank you. All right. Um, <clears throat> Last but not least, I'll entertain a motion for adjournment. I move. We adjourn. I second. Moved and seconded. Okay. All in favor? Rachel, aye. aye. Mary, aye. Oh, aye. Mary, aye. Chair is aye. Um, all right. Happy Thanksgiving to all. Happy Thanksgiving. Thank you as well. Yes. Happy Thanksgiving. And hopefully we get some more 70 degree days. <laughs> yeah, keep them coming. <laughs> all right, I'll take care. Thank you all. Thank you all. We'll Bye. see ya. Right. Bye now. <laughs>